Good day. So today we want to create a website, which is this one. And this will come in handy soon because we want to uh, work with this concept uh, with the next assignment that we are doing. So pay very close attention to how we're actually working with this. So for your assessment, we'll work with uh, this image. I'll give this one to you. I'll also give you that one. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one and this one as well. Uh, we'll also learn how we can do some of these things and uh, we'll follow um, what I've already created, which is found on these two pages, but we'll do it sequentially so that we can be able to go through um, what each element offers so that we can uh, get this as the final output. So um, we are just then um, adding on to what we have been learning so far and that which we have learned, we will use for creating this website. So at the same time, we want to create um, a folder. So the folder becomes the first element that we do. So since I had a folder already that was created, I will have to go to my HT docs and create another folder for this particular lesson. So we'll go through it step by step, hopefully get everything uh, in order and then build our page from there. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our folder where by default, we go to our Zam. We go to our HT Docs. We go to our Diploma 25. And then we want to create our example. So our example would be, let's call it site. That's what we want to call it. At the same time, for our site, we need to have a CSS. CSS and an images folder. Then in our site, we would also need to create a few files. So in this particular instance, I also need these files to be open, but uh, let's do our folder first. We go to open folder, we then select site, we select that folder so that we can be able to create our values. And then for our values, we also go to file, new text file, file, save as. We then say index. Uh, and then we want this to be our PHP. We click on save. <coughs> So after we've saved, we then want to put um, our content. And our content can be created as follows. First, we want to have our HTML. From our HTML, we want to have our head. We also want to have our body. In between our heads, we want uh, a title. Whereby this becomes our shoes website. Click on save. 
At the same time, we want to put uh, our CSS file that we create it and then we save it. We want to save our CSS there and we want it to be called line.css. So the naming is entirely up to you. You can then have it whichever way you want it to be. Uh, we create our link. We need to make sure this exists. And then we call this a style sheet. We have an href. We want to link to our line. So that CSS, then we have line. CSS. Uh, that's the first thing we need to do. So since I've got most of my content, I'll also need to put um, my images. So my images uh, will come into that folder and uh, I've got my content here. And I just go to my images, I select everything that's there, I click on copy, I come to my site, I paste my content there. So since I've got my content, I can now proceed. So what I need to do is open uh, my existing file, which was stored in queues, and then open that. So that I get some of the content that I want. So I didn't have some of these things in my text. So I need to copy that information. Where I, I think, let me also explain what this does. Right, so I need to specify the document type, type which is HTML. Uh, I also need to give the language that I want to work with. I also need to uh, specify the character set, uh, which is UTF-8, which simply means I want to be able to have my characters be recognized uh, depending on the browser that I'm working. Uh, at the same time, I also need this line over here which simply is used for checking the screen size of whatever device that's opening uh, this web page. So we are saying meta viewport, we've got content with device with initial scale is equal to one. So in other words, it checks for the device that's running this. And then when it gets that device, it um, gives uh, a result based on the screen size. So that's pretty much what uh, line number four means. At the same time, we also want uh, to include our icon. So I'll maybe, maybe let me copy it and see how everything will be working. So I go to my link. I've got a rel is equal to, if I'm not mistaken, it's icon. So I've got my type and I've got my href. Okay, so, um, I think the first one is icon, yes. Image dash x, x icon. So it's image slash x icon, like that. And then for the location of this particular icon, would want to go to image. And then we want fabric on dot png okay so what you then notice is in this particular instance we then used a dot png file 
the last time we used the dot ico file but it's more more or less the same thing because we want to get uh the output um that is exactly the same whereby we've got an icon for for our our site basically so what we then need to do is since we know that this is a site we need to come here we need to go to localhost uh, d25 we need to type in site so that we see what our site does so as you can see in the corner there our icon has been displayed so the first part of our site is done and uh, we can at least then move on to the next few elements of our site and each element that we're moving to will help us to know and to use uh, the various aspects that are available for our website so these aspects will then be creating them as we proceed um, let's continue the next thing we want to do now is to create our segment or our section so as it stands everything is everywhere and when it's everywhere we don't really know where each element will start from so maybe let's actually see uh, some of these comments and we'll make some more of our own whereby the first thing that we've got is this and we call this a comment so we want an, our navigation okay so our navigation becomes the first bit of our page where we put so this is this contains the menu values among others so we'll then need to put uh, a div tag And our div tag simply will contain the contents of what we want this page to have so in our previous uh, document we had actually put it this way and uh, we had also placed uh, different values in this particular section the next thing we want is the content of the page uh, we want image so i think let's actually put most of the things that we we've, we've got or that we want to have as our comments and we'll be explaining each section as we proceed so after this section we want to go to the main section right and this section we want it to have a div tag as well and then we want to have the footer or the bottom of the page So we want uh, the top, which is the navigation. We want the bottom, which is uh, the bottom of the page where we'll put our footer. We want the main section where we'll put uh, the various elements that we want to work with. I think if we can split it this way, it then gives us uh, the, the order of how we want this page to, to look and some of the things that we, we've got in this page. So we'll work with it a little bit uh, 
similar to what we've got here as our guide, but we might change certain elements that we see on this particular page or that we had in this particular uh, instance. So let's, let's get into um, some of the things that we want to have. Okay. So in this particular page, if we can go back to our page, we can see that we've got this gray part. The gray part, we want to see how we make it. We also want to have an idea of how to actually make it so that uh, when we are making this gray part, we can be able to uh, learn each element. So we want to have a shoe corner, a men, a women, children, and a sale. So if we come back to our document, let's make that first section because i think it's easier to do section by section element by element item by item until we are done with what we are hoping to achieve uh, at the same time we also need to have our css giving us uh, some of the things that we want to see so to begin with we can put uh, our anchor tag, which is our A. We can put a C tag, which is our P. Within our P tag, we also want four anchor tags. So with these tags that we've got, let's put our content or our context so this is supposed to be our shoe shoes corner this is supposed to be our men this is supposed to be our women this is supposed to be our children and this is supposed to be our sale From there, we need to put an href where our href, uh, in the meantime, we can just leave it as hash since we don't have other pages. We do the same for the other values. And uh, we are done with that section. We come back to our page, we can refresh and see the following. So we've got our shoes corner, we've got our men, our women, our children, and our same. So that is the first part of our page. But as you can see, we've got it this way, uh, where we've got our shoe corner, men and women, but we want to then make this section look like that section. So the easiest would be to just uh, Inspect element so that we see the elements that we are working with and where each element is. We also do the same here, inspect element. And we see what each value provides. So we are then saying where everything is stored. As you can see here, we've got... Uh, this value that is written NAV. So our NAV becomes our starting point, right? Uh, but before that, we remember that when we're working with CSS, we also need the star element, star for all elements. So let's actually create those two in our page, which is our line.css. So we want to have this section uh, designed. So we come to our CSS, we then put first of all our star, and then the next element is dot nav, which stands for class, 
and we want to put our elements there. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put a margin and we want the margin to be zero. We also want to put a background color and we want it to be hash D3, D3, D3. That's what we want to put as our page, okay? If I click on save, let's see what this gives us. If I refresh, we then have everything being gray. No, we don't want everything to be gray. Let's actually move our gray to our nav because we still want the white background. So we click on save. Uh, we refresh. Okay, so we haven't put nav anywhere. But we now need to put nav so that our nav is uh, visible. Uh, maybe before we do that, let's also put a text of our text. I think it's font. Font family. Oh, um, we usually work with this one. Let's put the one we're used to. And uh, we need a box sizing. And we put a bo border box. Uh, okay, I think for now we can add the element whereby at this particular instance on our div tag we want to put a class. And we want our class to be equal to nav. Okay, if we come there, we refresh. I think everything now looks the way we want it to look. Okay, so we are closer to getting it this way. Um, right, in our nav, We've also got a width, a height, a position, and a margin bottom. Okay, so width, height, position, and a margin bottom. So we want to put those elements in our nav. So width, we make it 100%. Margin bottom, we make it 25px. Uh, a height, I think we had put it at 20px, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. No, our height is 50 actually. We make our height 50. Um, there's one thing I should be leaving out with height position. We need a position. Um, okay. So we can save this and maybe just refresh to see what it looks like. Okay, so our content is now visible, whereby we've got a background color, we've got a width, we've got a margin, bottom, we've also got a height. So what this then simply means is for our height, we're talking of this section to that section. We're saying that's 50 pixels. Our margin bottom, we're saying from about half of this is where our margin starts and our width we are saying it should cover the whole page uh the last thing we need to put is a position i didn't put a position 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 we need it to be fixed so that it stays in the top section of our page okay so on that particular aspect we are done with um our 
top section of our page. The next part we need to do is if we inspect element, we want to work with the we want to work with the logo. We also want to work with the links. So um, after our navigation, which is this part, we want to get to our logo. Right. So maybe let's get into why we are naming these elements before we've used them. So what we want to be our logo is this thing. So when I right clicked and I come to my elements, I can see that we are describing this aspect written logo. And it's got a class code logo. And then our class code logo, if we come to our elements, we've got a CSS file that contains logo. And logo then becomes this uh, content that we've got there. And then with this content, we can be able to then uh, view that. So what this then means now is we want to format that content so that it's fixed in the corner and it's got whatever it is that we are hoping to work with. Okay, so let's get working. First thing we want to do is we want to put this as a float left. Okay. Click on save. Uh, if we come back to our page, we can also put following href and our href. We also put our hash, and then we want a class. We want our class to be equal to logo. So logo becomes this aspect that we've put there. Uh, but we still have more things that we want to put. We also need a padding. Let's put the padding, which is 8 and 60. But before we do that, let's just see what this looks like. OK, so you notice the moment I put this to go to the corner, it adjusts automatically this content. It's adjusting the content because we have specified that it should do that. Where have we specified that it should do that? We specified that in the first of all the class, second of all the float left. So in other words, we then take everything that we have and we want it to be aligned to the left, which is what we then get in this particular instance. And in that instance, we can uh, be able to realign our content or realign our content. Okay, then this is how it will look. We are getting there. We are not yet there, but we are getting there. Okay. Um, the next element that we want is to have. this content to my right. So we inspect elements and then we want to um, put the following. So to do that, um, we come just before our logo because we're going to modify this content. So we want our nav, and then we want our A within our nav to have a text decoration of none. 
and to have a color of white, like that. So the moment we have done this, we can now be able to come to our page, we refresh, and then we'll actually see that by changing the content that we've changed, we now have our page looking like that. I'm not sure why it is a bit different because this looks smaller than this. Okay, maybe let's actually play around with the font size. So the font size, let's actually make it 16 ex. So it's looking a little bit different. I'm not sure why. But I guess we are almost where we want to be because you can see that uh, with our designing, we've almost got what we want to work with. But let's, let's, let's keep working on it. Let's keep working on it. So, um, we also want uh, the menu which is what is going to contain this information. Uh, we need to create that as well. So after our logo, let's put another element that we'll then have as our menu. Huh, so our menu, we then have a float as well we then give it float right and uh, we come to our key tag and then we save it as menu or we add menu to the mix so the moment we've put menu to the mix we can refresh I refreshed the wrong part and now our menu goes to the right so this was given a float right this was given a float left and uh, we still don't have it looking the way we want maybe there's something that we could have missed Okay, I'm, I can't seem to see it. Uh, let's also do a few changes. Um, for this one, let's put it at 14. Uh, that's the first bit. Let's also put uh, in our navigation, let's put a padding left. Uh, let's put that at 10 px. Let's also put a padding top. Let's put it at 5 px. Uh, and the moment we've done that, uh, we should be able to notice a change. So if I refresh, we then get to see a change to our content or to our content. Um, at the same time, let's say if we've got our page like this, we've pretty much done the first part, the first part. We can always, um, we can always improve it as we progress, but um, as it stands, we've got the first part done. It's not exactly the same, but we are getting there. We are definitely getting there. Um, let's move on. So as we can see, our 
page is somewhat um, getting there. The next element we need to add is our image or our banner. So uh, in this particular instance, um, I was actually thinking we could do it this way. We could actually create a class at that point. Call this class a container. We also create a class there. We call it a footer. These will work with um, simultaneously, but uh, let's actually start with the first container. Okay, with a container, we want it to come soon after our menu. And our container, we want it to have a margin <clears throat> where we can call this 20 pixels. We want a padding. Let's actually have a padding left of 15 pixels. Let's have a padding right of 20 pixels. That, and then we have it as our container. So this then becomes where we store our elements. At the same time, <clears throat> let's have the first section of this body element. The first section, we can then have a container section. Whereby, sorry, 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 sorry. I don't want it to be a container. I was thinking of container since I'm seeing container here. We want to have uh, a banner. Uh, and the banner, initially I'd actually made them key tags, but let's actually change them to div tags. And the div tags should give us uh the area where we want to actually have our image and our image would be as follows we need a source we need an alternative where this becomes our banner and then we need our source IMG, we want the banner dot PNG, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and then this becomes our instance of the banner. Let's just save and we refresh. So, as you can see, We've put our banner in position, but we might need it to be restyled, if I can put it that way, because it's looking a bit clumsy, but we might need to have it restyled a bit so that it looks a little bit better. Um, but uh, we've got our banner in place. Um, the next element we need to then work with is, because we've got that top part going, uh, we've got the banner going, we now need to have this section running, uh, which is the next part. We also need to have that section that section and the footer section, okay? Uh, I think for this to make sense, let's follow it sequentially and we can be able to view the contents of each element or we can be able to work with each element simultaneously. So let's um, work on the next element. 
The next element we now need to work on is the images. Okay, so with our images, there's many things that are going into our images. First of all, we want our image. We also want a uh, our caption. We also want to have a div that controls everything. Okay, so we will put our div. We'll also put our p tag. We'll put everything else that comes with it. So that uh, instead of seeing all this code, let's actually break it down stage by stage. So from there, we've got our banner. The next element we want is our image row. If we can call it that, image row. Where we will do the following. We'll put a div tag, put a closing div tag, uh, and then this div tag will then have several p tags. And within those p tags, we want to have a figure I think that's what we called it. Is it a figure? Yes, it's a figure. And we also need a figure caption. So we've got a figure. We also need a figure caption. FIG caption. We close the caption. So we've got the fig, we've got figure caption. We also need the image, IMG, like that. And I think this is pretty much everything for the image row. Um, I was just giving the outline of what each element should contain. And uh, the moment we know what each element should contain, we can then be able to build from there. So let's um, get our sources. For each image. And then uh, we also need a caption for each image uh, as we proceed. But let's actually do each stage by stage. So let me just do it that way so that it becomes a bit more visible and uh, easier to see. So we'd want our figure our fig caption and our figure to look like I'm doing on the screen. And we can be able to add each element as we proceed. Okay. So this is where it gets interesting, although still we can be able to view some of the content as we proceed. So we want to select our images for IMG. 
and then we want admin one dot uh, We want the alternative text to be equal to name. Uh, we want the figure caption to be made. Okay. If we've done it correctly, we should see a change in our page. So let's refresh. And uh, there we go. We've got our image and uh, our value. Let's actually go. Oh, so our image is actually main one. Okay, it's main one. What? Ah, okay, the extension is wrong. So we just need to change the extension. Click on save. We refresh. And yes, we've got our content. Perfect. But as you can see, my image is not the same size as the image that we see there. It's not the same size. So we need to also play around with the size. Uh, it doesn't have a border as well. We would also need to play around with the border. Okay. So that being the case, we still need to then play around with our CSS. Like we said, our CSS pretty much gives us the design that we are looking for. And that design becomes something that we'll be able to work with or to be able to work on. So to do that, we need to do uh, the rest of the images. And then we'll play around with our design in the next stage of what we are doing. So we want to actually have it as a row. Um, the next element would be IMG, uh, comma, women, one, dot, JPG, and then we want the alt to be equal to women. Okay, let's refresh. Perfect, perfect. Now we've got our content looking the way we want it to look. Uh, we need to finish. Also put women. Uh, this becomes children. This also becomes sale. Um, we have the same thing. IMG. What did we name? Okay, we've got children one. Uh, we've got our alt and our alt uh, should contain children. Uh, we've got IMG. We've got our sale one dot JPG and we've got our alt. Should be equal to sale as well. And if we save that, we'll be able to see all the elements as they come. This one is wrong. What is wrong? Oh, okay. So that doesn't have a one. It's just save. Click on save. We refresh. And then we have it looking like that okay so 
that it stands we've got our image but our images are displayed vertically we don't want them to be vertical we want them to be um, horizontal and we want them to be uniform okay so to do that we need to go through uh, how this is actually designed um, and that design simply has two elements the first element is to have the outer section of our design the next element is to have the inner section of our design so the outer section is where we've got our div whereby we need to put a class for our div we also need to put a class for our uh tag. so to make this simple let's actually say the outside of the entire collection should be called img dash r so for our image row and then the inner part we then call it img dash c so this stands for our row this stands for our column and since we have created them like this we then want to put corresponding classes to them whereby we can put it that way this becomes our c we put our brackets uh and if i'm not mistaken we want to put display and we want it to be flex we also want to have our width to be 33.3 percent .3%. think if we work with that we can be able to see a change let's refresh perfect perfect exactly what we wanted so we've actually created um a row where each of our images are in the same line if i can put it that way and when they're in the same line they are then visible so in the same row uh, for lack of a better word and that row then gives us whatever it is that we are hoping to view okay but we still have a problem it's still not the size that we want so we then now need to work with the individual images and uh, get uh, a change in the images okay so in our images we then need to put a border and a size for each of the images each of the images so let's create uh, another element which will say img and then we say mod so that we put our modification we want to put the width to 250 250 
the dx. We want the height, 250 dx. We also want uh, the padding, 25 dx. We also want to put a border. First of all, we want our border to be gray. We want it to be 1 px. We want it to be dotted like that. So we want to modify our individual images. So we can put image modification as our CSS. And uh, since we have modified our CSS, we also need to implement our CSS in each of the images. So we then put a plus and our class becomes img-mod so that we modify the image. Uh, let's save and refresh. So there we go. We've got our image. It's been modified and it's also got a, a board around it. But the border is quite the same. Maybe let's increase the size of the border. Let's call it 5px and it's dotted. Aha, uh -huh, like that. So it looks a bit better. Looks a bit better, but 5 is a bit on the big side. Let's reduce that to 3 and let's see what it gives us. Aha, uh -huh, I think 3 makes a bit more sense. Lovely. Lovely. So let's do that for the next set of images so that they also look the same. As you can see, I think our CSS makes life so much easier, clearer, and better to handle. If we refresh, we then get to see what our images will eventually look like. So we've got um, our women, our children, and our sale. So we've changed the appearance a bit. We've got that. Uh, but We've changed to, to that. So we are getting more or less to the area where we want to get to, but we still don't have space in between these values. And our images are a little bit bigger, uh, which I think is still okay, but uh, we need to um, play around with this so that it looks better. So we still come back to our CSS. Uh, let's also put, uh, instead of our padding being five, let's add padding left as well. Padding left, we can put it as 10 px. Uh, our padding right, we can put it as 15 px save our content. So if we refresh, no, that's not what we want. We don't want our padding there. So in other words, we need to actually work with it in our uh, image C. So for the padding, left let's put it at 12 px we also need to put a padding right put it at 12 px click on save and then uh, if we refresh we get uh, the following hmm.
Okay, let's go back to this one and let's see how each element has been done. Okay, so according to this, our padding left is bigger. Let's put it at 35. Let's also put our padding at 35 as well. Let's see how that gives us. So I was right to work with the padding left. Uh, did I save this? Okay, let's remove padding right. Save. Let's refresh. Okay, it's still not giving us the result that we want. Okay, um, I didn't want us to duplicate everything that we've got. I wanted us to play around with it and get a result that is a bit more favorable. Okay, in that particular instance, that's fine. Let's work with what we've got. Uh, but let's reduce some elements. Let's uh, go back. I think let's actually go back to the one EX that we had. Uh, and work with that, at least it will give a better appearance than the 3px that we wanted to work with. And I think we can work with this. Uh, at the same time, let's also modify uh, the figure. Let's have this also give us links as well, whereby this becomes a link to a page. Uh, and then we have an href, which we then make to be a, a, uh, our pound or our hash. Uh, we close our tag. We do the same for the others. We do the same for this one. Okay, like that. The moment we have done that, we can be able to refresh. And uh, because of our links, we've made our links be white, so we won't be able to view our content. So do you see um, another disadvantage of having our CSS? We then now need to specify each element according to where the element is stored, and uh, we'll be able to change certain attributes on our element. But uh, let's correct that. And so after going through um, most of the page, I then realized that there's something that is very different on the two uh, concepts. We'll still work with them. Uh, and uh, I'm liking the smaller uh, border because it looks a bit neater. This looks uh, a bit crazy and a bit um, out of uh, the boundaries of being user-friendly. So the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, play around with the image. And then the image, uh, if we can, 
if we can. Uh, let's style it this way. We want to have a padding for the image uh, where we specify bigger brackets or bigger margins of what our image should be. So, for example, we can then do it this way and say 45 pixels, and we have 65 pixels, like that. So, we want to be able to specify edges around uh, our image. Let's see if we do it that way and we refresh. Uh, we then have our image being smaller, but we don't want the image, we want the border. Okay, so if we do it this way, it will still look okay, but it's not what we are hoping for. Let's actually redo that. Uh, undo, undo, we leave it at five. We want the border to be different. Okay, so let's split the image modification and then we put the image border and then we put the spacing between uh, the borders. Okay, um, let's just try it before we split them. Let's say we put uh, a margin right and then we put 10 pixels for our margin. We refresh. And yes, we are getting something that we are talking about. So we might not need to split it. So we put a margin right of 10 pixels. Uh, at the same time, let's actually just increase the size of the border to maybe 2.2, 2.3px. Uh, we refresh, and then we have uh, our border looking like that. A little bit different, uh, and also maybe a bit nicer, uh, if we can put it that way. And uh, we can then be able to still play around with our page and see what is going on. And as you can see also in the edge there, we've got a bit of a challenge because the edge uh, has... A small space there. We can also play around with that maybe later in our modification. Let's just see if we can quickly um, do that. I think we we can go there. Uh, instead of left, we also add a right. Save, and in the moment we save, we can refresh, and yes, uh, the space in the right has increased, and I think it looks slightly better than uh, what we originally had. Okay, so at least we've we've made the side better, and as you can see, we are sort of improving it as we go, but we're getting the main concept of uh, what we are hoping to do. And the idea is each time that we are playing around with CSS, we can then get to see how the two designs work or how the two designs merge and give us something that uh, we can be able to use for our day-to-day -day running or for our day-to-day -day content of whatever it is that we are hoping to achieve and to do on our page. So we are just gonna go at least step by step with each element. And the moment I'm done with the two projects, because um, the first one, which is this one, it's already complete. I can say I can safely say it's complete. There's a few elements that we might need to add and work on, but in essence, it's a complete project. But in this particular second one, we are doing it together and uh, as
as we are doing it, you can see what each element does. And as we are naming the elements, I'm sure you can follow along to see what uh, we have created or what we will be creating. So as we do that, we also proceed to say, um, maybe we can put comments on each element so that uh, some of the things we can uh, proceed to um, know. So this page settings, uh, this gives us our menu setting. Uh, this gives us our container. Gives us our container and then uh, the next bit gives us our images. Images and a row. Like that. Uh, at the same time, we would want to get into the next row, which is going to be our text. Okay, so we want to use the same uh, aspect, but in this particular instance, this was for our this was for our images. Now we need to have for our text. So we'll still do the same thing with row and the column, but uh, we'll name our rows. Uh, text row so that we know that this is for our text and then the next one will be our text C for our column like that. So we still use the same uh, uh, attributes. We want to display of flat But this time we want to change uh, some of the context. So we want uh, a width as well. We want our width to be 50%. But we want um, the following. We want a margin of 5px. We want a padding whereby we've got 15 px and 18 px okay and then uh we would want a color let's actually add color as well we'd want a color of green Right, so we can put a forest green like that. And I think we are good to go. We are definitely good to go. So these are the two elements we want to work with, whereby we create a column for our row. We create uh, a column for our column, or we create a tag for our column. Okay. So let's see how we can implement these. Because now we want to have um, another comment where our comment would then give us the following, which is text columns. Okay, so we would want um, a div 
and then uh, individual divs as well. Div. Uh, we'll put a div, and then within this set, this becomes class equals text dash r. And then we need another div. Div. We want our class to be equal to. We want our class to be equal to column. So um, we need to put a second div. And we need a class of txt dash c. We need two of them. Uh, let's just put some text about adverbs like that. So we click save. We refresh our page. Let's see if we've done it well. Perfect. Everything is looking sharp. So as it stands, we now need to um, work with our two pages. I think we've got our content in order, whereby we've got our adverts and uh, our about. So let's uh, play around with our content. And uh, we do the following. We want an H1. We also want an H1 for our heading. We click on save. Uh, let's just refresh and see if it will give us ah perfect it gives us what we want. Uh, let's also go to our adverts. We make it an H1 as well, and an H1. Like that. So um our columns are in order. I'm just going to copy what we have here, where we have just uh, given some text, or we had written some text. Uh, and our text will be as follows, where it's a p tag. It's a p tag. We then have our content. We click on save. We refresh. Oh, I've actually pasted it on the wrong section. Uh, let's just copy everything. And we save. Let's save our content. So our content um, now looks like that. Okay. So we also want to add exactly like what we had. Or like what we have there, whereby we still need to put uh, this information. Uh, let's still come back to what we've got there, and uh, can copy and paste. Simply put, we have p tags. Uh, but these I might need to remove because we can work with them in a slightly different manner or we want to do different things than what we see on our page. So let's just save, we refresh, and we see our content showing up in that manner. So 
So now we want to work on our page, right? Um, I think the green color is not coming out properly. Let's uh, remove it and revert to our normal color. Uh, we'll actually just put green. Don't want that green color anymore. Okay, we save our content. We refresh. I'm not sure why it's not okay. Now it's changed back to to normal. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create uh, a few changes. And part of the changes that we want, we want to be able to say, uh, for example, our heading, our pages, and our list. That's what, that's what we want to work with. So as it stands, in our rows, we now want to play around with the, this section there. So to play around with that section, we want to do the following. We want to put our text dash C, and then we want to work with our P. Also, let's put our H1. Because we want to have uh, a uniform section of how some of these things work. So, first thing we want to do is we want to put a margin and we want the left margin to be 20. We also want to have uh, um, Yeah, I think we can we can leave it at that. I was, think, I was thinking maybe we can also put a padding, and our padding becomes five x. So that we, we 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 buff our our page. Let's refresh. Um, yes, I think it's looking decent. We've worked with um, uh, our content where. We are working with our H1 and our P tag. We've left out uh, the links. So let's also work with the links as well. So, we, sorry, the, the list, it's the LI tag. That's the last element we had left out. So if we refresh, I think um, things look a bit better. Okay. So as you can see, each element that we are working with, can actually be able to manipulate it to get uh, a result that is unique for us or that is user friendly to us so that when we're working with each element we can actually be able to give it an output of whatever it is that we hope to be gaining or to be using for our element and each element will work individually and individually, it will give us uh, something that we can be able to achieve uh, or even master as we are as we are dealing with uh, as we are dealing with um, each element of our design and our design in particular. At the same time, we've actually um, just put something unique or uniform for each of these elements. So in other words, we are saying the moment we've got text C, we have actually put paragraph in text C, the heading in text C, and the list in uh, text C to have specific elements that we can manipulate. Uh, but we can do for the individual attributes themselves as well so we can simply say uh, the next element we want to 
work with our text C, we also want to work with uh, our heading one. Right? So that if we've got a heading one elsewhere, we cannot have the same uh, attribute uh, applying to that heading. So we can say text. Uh, no, we don't need text. We need the font property. So we want font. Font size. We want to change the size. We want our size to be 36 pixels. We want our font weight to be 200. We also want our text transform to be uppercase. Okay, so these are the elements that we want to manipulate in our H1. If we refresh, we can then see that our text changes. Our font changes. Okay, um, maybe it's a bit on the big on the uh, extreme side. Let's reduce that to 26 let's reduce that to 100 for the weight control save we refresh then it looks like that okay so we're just working with our design uh so now um this is not what i want i wanted this to be specific to my Heading one. So I think might need to change this and put the following. Let's see if we transform it that way. Yes. Hmm, but it's not giving me exactly what I want. Because it's not supposed to transform everything. Because I wanted to just transform the top bit. Yes, I think this way it works. Where I've just said I wanted to specifically transform uh, the heading. I think now we are getting somewhere. Now we've just got the, the type was transformed which I think makes better sense, okay? Uh, at the same time, we would want to have a modification on our list. And our lists, we can then put them this way. I think we can also do the same text slash C put my bracket, I put my list, and then uh, I do the following text, the decoration, uh, I say none. Uh, we also want text, um, Okay, let's not use the text. Let's use font uh, and font stretch. Let's put it as expanded. Yeah, I think those are the changes we want to make for our list. Let's refresh and see what it gives us.
No, that's actually not giving us what we want. Not giving us what we want. Okay, let's remove this. Because we are not supposed to see. Ah, uh, no, it's the wrong property. My mistake. It's the wrong property. We want to have list. Yes, this is what we want. We wanted the list style. Also still have text decoration as none. Uh, yes, we wanted the list style. That's what we wanted. Let's refresh. Perfect. 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 So that's what we wanted to uh, modify on our about. Okay. I think as, as it stands, we've done um, justice to our about and our text. Now we want to include that same concept in our adverts. So we've got our adverts, which look like that. But I'd want our adverts to be ad advertisement to be outside. Whatever we have here to be within this sort of shape. So we'll, we'll also uh, copy this section and uh, at least use that as our guide or as our guideline for what we want to do. Okay. So uh, since we know that th these are some of the things that we want to work with. Let's implement that in our advertisement side. So to do that, uh, we would come back and uh, give a a new a new value, and this value would be advert. And for our advert, I think I can copy all of this. Where, let me explain what I've just copied. I've created a new class. And by the way, we call these classes, uh, whereby we can say advert is our class. Uh, we've got a background color, which we've put as that color. We've got a width. Which we've made that color. We've got a border, which we've made that color. Uh, we've got a padding, which we've made 50. We've got a margin, which we've also made 20. Okay, so with this having been done, we can come back to our page, and in our page, we can then be able to put a div tag whereby we want to put our advert. So the class would be equal to advert. And uh, we can click on save. If we refresh, now we can have our advert. So I think we have done uh, justice to how we would want this to look. But let's actually change something because I don't like the way that it's fitting. Let's actually put this width as 100% to be 100% of our container, which is this one. And uh, if I change it that way, it will then show us um, the entire width of the page. So we would have information that we would want to view and see within our adverts. So we have sort of created a container or a section where we'll be able to view our adverts and get certain elements of our adverts uh, being displayed in this particular section. Okay, so we also want to put uh, this uh, button 
uh, and uh, introduce uh, our JavaScript. Okay. So our JavaScript would need us to at least come back to our page. We view what our JavaScript looks like. Uh, explain how it should function and then uh, recreate our JavaScript. So our JavaScript starts here. We create a button and it's the same concept as our previous button whereby we put the button name or we put the button uh, syntax and the type is equal to button and then in between the button we then now have this code which is our javascript whereby we're saying on click document get element by id we then have the id being demo then we have our dot inner html is equal to date and then the text of this button will be click me to display date and time and then we've got our button and then the id now which is demo is what we have put in this particular space okay so we want to recreate this on our own page so i'll give you a guideline of how that can be done. The first thing that we need to do is we need to have um, a key tag. Right. And then in this P tag, we can then put the following. We can state that we want to show how we use JavaScript, okay, we then put it that way. We can also put another tag to just um, modify our text. So this is simply a tag that will make our text bold. And with our text, we are able to see some bold text. So I can click on save so that we see what this has done to our page. Uh, if we refresh, this show how we use JavaScript. I don't think that makes much sense, okay? Let's actually put this way. Get date and time using JavaScript. I think that makes better sense instead of what we have put. Okay, so we want to show you how you can get dates and time using JavaScript. That's the first thing. The next thing we want to do is we want to also display our content. Okay, so we can also use another element which is our i which stands for italics display content below you also put a colon and then where do we want to display we want to put a p tag as well p tag p tag and then we put an id whereby our id gives us where we want this content to be and our id we can then call this um advert okay so our advert would then give us whatever it is that we want So 
at the same time, we can put our button within this context. So let's uh, have our button with the closing tags. And we then say view, for lack of a better word. Okay, so this is what we want to have in the advert. So we want to have a button that says view. Uh, we want to have an ID that says advert. Uh, and uh, we've put it within our ID. So hopefully it will not give us problem. Let's, uh, let's refresh. And uh, the moment we cl click on it, nothing shows. Uh, let's have this come down. Uh, and uh, we can be able to see what that gives us. So uh, let's also just modify this section. And uh, in that section, we simply put a break. And that break should give us, uh, yes, that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Uh, let's now go into our JavaScript, which is what we've got there. We now want to put the following in our page. So we want to type, which is a button, uh, and then put the type type equals button uh, and then we want the JavaScript code so we want an on click event uh, on click equals the following so that's what we want to do um i've just sort of given the breakdown of how each element should be and uh, we'll then recreate our on click event so our on click event will then have the following content within it whereby we want to be able to use a variable uh, and then we want to use a method. We want to have the value within that method. And then we want to set where we want to place this information. And then we want to give a result of that element. So uh, we come back here. We then put document. And we put a dot get uh, element by ID. We open in the close brackets to show that this is a function, and then we put the ID of the element that we want to get, which is add that. And then we, we put the location of where this is supposed to be. So it's in a HTML uh, and then we say is equal to a function for our date which then displays our date. Like that. So if I've done it properly, or if we sort of copied everything properly, we should have a result. Perfect. Perfect. So everything works.
perfect. Perfect. So let's explain what this is doing. Although we might need to put everything outside so that at least we still have our button. We are simply saying we've created um, our p tag where everything is to be stored. We've worked with a new tag, which is B, which simply gives us the bold. Uh, BR gives us a new line. Our I gives us italics of the contents of this text. Our P gives us an ID of whatever it is that we want to work with. And then the button now gives us the JavaScript that we might need to work with. So that is a button. And then we have an on-click event where that on-click event is equal to a document, which is the page that we're working with. And then, then dot, the, the dot gives us a function, which is get element by ID. So in other words, we want to look for an element on our page, and then we reference that element by name, which is advert. And then we want to display whatever we get onto our page. And then what do we want to display? We want to display the date, and the date is then what we display in this given element. So let's actually copy this shift end to cut. Uh, let's delete. Let's then put um, our content outside of uh, our P tag that if we refresh, we'll be able to see our button. And then if we click on a view, it will now display before our button and our button doesn't disappear like it was doing previously. So that is how we work with our JavaScript. So um, that's a slight introduction to JavaScript. We will get into JavaScript in the next lesson that we'll be working. So as it stands, we would also want to get into the next uh, set of events that we want to work with. So in this particular instance, everything was a little bit clumsy. We'd need to uh, maybe rearrange it slightly so that, because um, after this, we're having a search, and then after that search, we have the contact form and contact details, but we want to sort of put it uh, in a neat way, similar to this, so that at least this doesn't look scruffy like the way it is. Let's actually uh, redraft this in the next element that we're working with, and then we we'll eventually uh, close with the bottom section, and with the bottom section, we'll have uh, something that uh, we'll be able to use uh, for our page. So um, I had actually started earlier, but my recording had no sound. So I have to go back to where I was. The last thing we did was um, we looked at about and adverts. And then we were saying we need to actually put the search and the contact us whereby we can be able to get uh, a, an output that looks like this. We just want to make it neater than what we have there, but we'll still have the same concept uh, on our page. So let's uh, get into that where I created a div and I put a div uh, class so that I can see where my test is. And my test in this particular document shows me there. So it means I'm outside of everything, but within the container that we created. Uh, let's get working. So we'll just use the same concepts that we used previously, where we can put two sets of div tags. And we'll use the same format we used in the previous uh, div, where we've got our text C and our 
txtr. So this becomes our class txt r and then the next one is our class txt c okay uh, that being said we can say this we want to have our search This we want to have our contact. So I'm just putting this so that at least we know that we are in the right spot. We refresh. Perfect. Perfect. So we'd also want to use uh, the same heading concepts that we have there so that we have uh, something similar. So I put my heading one. This will be my search. Uh, I put a heading one and this becomes my contact. If I save, I should be able to have the same concept as I have been thinking of working with. Okay, uh, so would want to put a search bar whereby our search bar we've got it here, and our search bar is as follows. Okay, I don't want to use what I've got there. Let me just create my own context. Um, from there, I'll just put a P tag for space. And I'll put another P tag for our search bar. And uh, my search bar comes as follows. I'll need to put an input. And my type equals text. The name of the input is search. The placeholder is also search. Put two values there, and then we are good to go. So if I click on save, I refresh, I'll then have my search bar. From there, I also want to put uh, my contact as where I've got my name, I've got my subject, I've got my write something, I've got my submit. But I think I need to put uh, an extra an extra input. I'll do exactly like this is, but I'll add an extra input. Um, we'll then enter the following. Okay, I'll do the same thing that I did there. I'll put a P for space, and then I'll start by entering my information. So my information would be as follows. I think, let me... Let me do it this way. Um, so the name for this your name placeholder uh, 
this holder would be equal to name. And then the next one would be your message. Name would be equal to the message. And then the placeholder would be equal to our message. The next one will be our text area. Now, text area should have write something, and the name is write. Ah, sorry, this is subject. My mistake. Subject. Subject. And the name this becomes message. Place holder becomes your message. Okay, uh, I think we are done. Let's refresh. Perfect. Then we also need uh, a button. So pretty much this is how our contact should look like. If we refresh, oh, I haven't saved, so we can't see the changes. If we refresh, we can now be able to see our contact. Okay. Um, at the end of it all, we then want it to look like that. So we need to uh, at least include our CSS to design this and to do that we'll use the following let's say we just right click on this we inspect elements we then get to see uh, the elements that uh, we are working with where we have uh, our input our text area among other things okay let's just go to the CSS for this so that we see what um, we had for our inputs. The main element is our input text and text area. We've got our submit and our submit holder. Okay. So we want to copy this and put it in our content whereby we want the text area the text area uh, would want a width and a border so width we want 40 percent 
we want a border whereby we need to put the color, which is red, uh, the size, and uh, what else do we put for the border? Put the line type. So we want to be solid. Perfect. Then we would want the padding. which we said is 10 px. Click on save. Uh, let me just copy the rest and I'll explain what each element does. Okay. So we've got the border radius, which we said is 40 and 25. Uh, the box sizing is border box. The margin top, which is 6. The margin bottom, which is 16. The resize is vertical. I think we can actually save and refresh. If we refresh now, Nothing has changed. Let's see, did I use my reference properly? We've got an input type, which is text, and then text area. We've got uh, an input type, text, perfect. And we've got our text area, perfect. Maybe there's something I missed. No, I don't think there's anything that I missed. Okay. That seems fine. Uh, the next set are the following. We can save that. Let's see if It's not changing. Let me see if there's any mistake that I've made. I don't think my CSS has refreshed. No, my CSS has not refreshed. Let's see if we can open a new private window paste or oh, my mistake local hosts d25 site there we go perfect this is what it's supposed to look like i don't know why it's not refreshing this is what our page is supposed to look like so um I'm not sure why this didn't refresh. Uh, our CSS is definitely updated. But uh, we also need to increase the size. Uh, also, uh, to use the button. Because the button is supposed to look like this. As well, let's just inspect it and see what it gives us. Oh yes, the button has no complete content. All right, let's just do it that way. We copy that and then we come to our submit. We save. should still work but anyway um we'll deal with that uh, 
effectively. Let's actually just go through our content. So we are saying in line 87, we want uh, an input and the type is text. We also want the text area, whereby we want the width to be 40%. So it's going to be 40% of the size of this section. So this is what our search will be. This will then be 40% of this section here. So in other words, we've created a section and we want 40% of that each and every one of these particular sections. Um, at the same time, we have a border. Right? Our border is red, it is solid, and it's one pixel. So that means we are looking at this surrounding matter. From there, we're also going to padding, which is 10. We want the distance between the edge of this container to at least have 10 pixels round it. Uh, we want the radius, which is 40 and 25. We are then designing this rounded shape. We also want the box sizing, which means how this is actually displayed uh, as a box. So we are actually creating a box to display what this is. At the same time, we also want the margin top to be 6, whereby we are looking at from the top or from the next value, we want to put an extra 6 pixels around it. We've got the margin bottom, whereby we're looking at also the distance between uh, the bottom and well, whatever element we're looking at. And then we've got the vertical. So basically what it means when we're working with our style sheets, we are giving styles based on what we hope to achieve and what we hope to see. And when we get that information, we can then be able to uh, redesign our concepts. Let's try and use Firefox and see if this update that we've done works. Because I'm not sure why it's taking long to update our our cache. Okay. Uh, it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. I'm not sure why. Okay. Um, let's see if we inspect the element. Would we be able to get the right output? Let's see with our no, this wasn't supposed to be there, right? Uh... Alright, I'll reset it. Let's see. Not sure why the button is not showing, but it's something simple in our code. But as of now, I think we can safely say we've got something that's running. Um, let's get into the last bit of our CSS and then we can close off this lesson. So in the last bit of our CSS, we want to put following. We want to put a p tag and the p tag should just give us copyright and g13 and copy then we are also supposed to put blue hat productions
like that. Um, if we refresh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Now we will, we just want to create the bottom bit of our our page, and then our page is complete. Uh, the bottom bit, if we look into this one, we can right click and get the element. So this is our footer content, whereby we want the background color and the color of the content to be a certain attribute. I think we put it as footer. So we want a background of red and we want a color of white and then we want a text a line of center. Click on save, come here. Let's see what happens if we refresh. Okay, this is actually not updating. Let's see the next one. Perfect, this one updated. So we are good to go. Uh, the last thing we can do is um, put our padding so that our padding gives us some room padding top we put 10 pixels our padding left we put five pixels our padding right we also put five pixels like that so this then means if we refresh now we're supposed to get something that looks like that. So with our input, we still need to fix that. But I think one of the reasons why we're getting a problem with our send is we've also got that button. So we need to specify what each of these buttons should be and how they should be created. I think as it stands, we've done most of our content. I will end the lecture here. So in the next lecture, I'll try and sort out the send and this view so that at least it looks better than it is. Also, maybe before we close, let's actually make our text area larger. Okay, let's say we've got our texts area we then want to put the i think it's the size let's see what was it here um the text area has a height of 200 pixels okay so we need the height so we want height to be 200 pixels. We also want uh, to extend the bottom margin. Bottom, we want to extend it by 10 pixels so that at least we get a bit of space. So if I refresh, um, let me figure out which page is working. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. So this page is also working. Uh, I've got it to work. Um, our send, our search, our contact, our subjects, our right message. So I can also click on my view so that at least works. And we can simply work with this as a complete design and working site.